So, so far we've always been talking about sort of thermodynamics um, and answering the question like, will a reaction take place? Okay, and so what did we sort of use as our decision maker for whether or not a reaction happens? Delta G, okay? This change in free energy, especially the sign of this free energy change represented whether or not something wanted to happen. So if the sign was negative, we said this is spontaneous, that forward reaction wants to happen. Kinetics now brings into play how fast that reaction proceeds. Um, with the reality being that it doesn't really matter if something is spontaneous, if it's never actually going to happen because it would be so ridiculously slow. Um, one of the examples I think on exam three was diamonds spontaneously turning into graphite or graphite into diamond, one, one way or the other. And that was at standard state, temp pressure and all of the details you were given, technically, whichever way it is, one of them is spontaneous. True. It just never happens in real life because the rate at which this would occur is so slow, it's not possible. Okay, other things um, that kind of factor into reaction rate. So the physical state of the reactants, okay, and again, this kind of, I think, follows with the idea that reactants physically need to collide with each other in order to form product. And so when you have something like a solid that's not really contacting maybe another solid very often, the likelihood of those things sort of spontaneously changing is going to be low, whereas um, sort of liquid state or something in a gaseous state where you have sort of increased um, collisions between reactants, um, it's much more likely to have a faster reaction. Okay. Concentration of the reactants, this is sort of a similar idea. If you have more of them, they can collide more often, okay, in sort of the same volume if you raise the concentration of these things. Um, that's going to increase the reaction rate. Okay. Temperature of the reaction. Um, this is a part that we're, we're, we're not going to get to. I just know we won't. Um, I think it, again, I think it follows logically that as temperature goes up, we're going to expect reaction rate to increase. Um, all I will say is that it's not linear. It's an exponential change. Um, but we're not probably going to look at what that equation looks like. Although I bet you can guess what it looks like. You know, e to the negative something over RT. Oh, yeah, we, we know. Um, and then finally, presence or absence of a catalyst, okay? And we, so we've talked about what a catalyst is a couple of times here, sort of something to accelerate uh, the rate of reaction. And our biological example was, of course, enzymes. Okay. So to this point, we've only been concerned with sort of the thermodynamic principles that identify is delta G less than zero and what are the equilibrium concentrations of products and reactants, okay? So what are we, equilibrium being we've let a lot time go by, okay? Remember we said real reactions can proceed in both the forward and reverse direction. And so it's not that we have sort of no reactions happening anymore, they haven't stopped. It just means that the rate forward and the rate backward have come to a balance where the overall concentrations are not changing with time. And depending on how favorable that forward reaction is, that might dictate how much, you know, products we have over reactants. Okay. Um, if delta G is less than zero, it gives you no information about how fast something is proceeding. So if you have, here's just sort of a simple um, reaction. We have A and B converting to C. So we have, um, in this particular case, initial concentrations of A and B are roughly equal, and we have no product. And then as we let this reaction proceed with time, and again, we don't know how much time this is, but we're watching the concentrations of A and B decay, and we're watching the concentration of C increase, okay? And the shape of these graphs won't always be like this. We'll talk about um, the different possibilities, okay? And eventually you're reaching an equilibrium. Now we have seen some plots like this where it was just sort of time on this axis and concentration, um, I think even on your last exam. So we hadn't talked about any of this, but you were to understand that as the concentrations were leveling out at some point, that was equilibrium concentrations because they were no longer changing with time, right? 